Hello, welcome to the Lighting Design Lab, this month's location for NTV. I'm Henry Yates. And I'm Sharon Bennett. The Lighting Design Lab shows off the latest in energy efficient lighting technology and shows our customers how to take advantage of it. Later in the show, we'll take a look at some of the energy saving ideas that you'll find at the lab. The lab has been the site for a series of meetings of the steering team for Seattle City Lights Employee Survey. The group is made up of the superintendent, deputy superintendents, and division directors. Union representatives are also invited to participate. This steering team leads the shaping and direction of City Lights' strategy for change, and the survey has been one component. Today, the group is meeting to confirm issues that were identified when steering team members conducted sessions with their employees. They'll determine where to focus the action planning, which is the next step in the survey process. Over the past few weeks, City Light employees were invited to attend meetings like this one to share and discuss results of the survey. They've prioritized among issues that are perceived as potential problems. We asked employees all over the utility how they felt about the survey results. I was surprised that it was shared this quickly. I've uh, been involved in other surveys and it seems like a lot more time passes by before you hear anything on it. Uh, I think the response of coming back to the people was, was timely. Now we find that there is a difference between perceived, what, what people may perceive to be true, and what is actually the truth. Now we're going to have to find some mechanism to bring those two closer together. But I, I can say I'm satisfied that it's, the problems are being addressed in a timely manner. Uh, people seem to be um, getting a lot of things they had on their chest off. And I think that we're going to come up with some good results now that people are truly expressing themselves where they really want to. And I think under our new leadership that we're going to come with some great success. As employees identify priorities, they're also looking forward to change. And I think Roberta Bradley has a lot to do with it. And I think she's finally going to straighten this thing out. I was disappointed that it didn't break it down to the supervisory level in, on the units because that's where we're having a lot of our problems. But other than that, I thought it was real good. Well, in the past, these surveys haven't gone very far. I mean, but I think maybe that with new management all the way to the top and down through the ranks, uh, we'll see. If they do something about it, I think it would be a better place to work. The ultimate goal and long-term objective of this process is to improve the work environment at City Light, and this will lead to improved customer service. And there was a great deal of feeling that how we treat one another and how we work together with our internal customers really does affect the quality of service to our external customers. So I find that this baseline information is really going to be really very, very good for us as we look at how we can achieve quality, quality customer service. And I think that the staff is saying to us that really begins on how we work together. The employee survey was designed by Wellens & Associates, led by Retha Wellens. She's facilitating today's steering team meeting. Earlier, we asked Retha how City Light survey results compare with similar organizations that have also been surveyed. Seattle City Light is very consistent with the rest of the world today regarding the need to use not just the leadership in the organization, but leadership facilitating every employee in the organization to speak up and get involved and make it happen here at Seattle City Light. During the month of December, action plans will evolve from the issues decided upon today. As the new year begins, we'll all be working to make it happen and improve the services that Seattle City Light provides. As we close out what's been a very busy year, it's a good time to look back and celebrate some of our accomplishments. And the Light Power and Pride Awards honor employees for outstanding achievement at Seattle City Light. The awards give us an opportunity to surprise employees with a special kind of recognition. The nominations are subjected to rigorous scrutiny, and the winners can take pride in knowing that they're rewarded for a special job well done. And here are the winners of the 1992 Light, Power, and Pride Awards.
You know, often achievements we take the most pride in are projects that at first seem overwhelming. And one of those projects called for concentration, coordination, empowerment from management, and just a whole bunch of plain old hard work. Rebuilding a deteriorating underground system in an upscale neighborhood is no one's idea of a dream job, but it's one the utility put a high priority on. Outages had become the norm in the North End's Innes Arden neighborhood. A direct buried system placed underground in the 1960s suffered from an early demise. It was one week in July they had six outages, and that was, that was it. At that point, we kind of reassessed the situation here, and the decision was made to rebuild it. The challenge was to design an efficient system to replace the old one, not overly disrupt this community, and get the job done on time and under budget. Rebuilding a system is similar, similar to remodeling a house. Like, uh, because when you remodel a house, you have like plumbing, existing plumbing, and electrical wire, and telephone, and studs. It's kind of like, a, uh, that, that is the obstacles. So rebuilding a system is the same, same type of problem, because you have other utilities, gas, sewer, and water, in the same, in the location that you want to be in. Looking at the area of the landscape and so forth, that I was not too excited about going on this job, that I figured it was going to be about eight hours of handling very angry property owners. But when they started the project, or way before they started the project, that community relations was called in and John Armstrong was assigned to the project. And John started meeting with the property owners and attending uh, the community meetings on a monthly basis. That He gave presentations of what was going to be happening out there. And he really set a good precedent as far as uh, communications with the property owner. The project took over a year from start to finish and included efforts from many parts of the utility. While no one thought it would be easy, a little dose of advanced planning went a long way with the Innes Arden Community Council and led to unusual customer praise. It was very good. I thought uh, uh, John Armstrong, who was the liaison person, did a real good job in staying in touch with us. And um, as far as I know, uh, having worked in public works projects all my life, that I, I felt it was minimal. There were minimal problems in getting the, the uh, work done. Actually, it's, it's gone well. The project's gone um, fairly well. Customers have actually been nice, because I, I think mainly because of the uh, fact they had people going to their meetings and explaining what we were doing all along the way, made it easy for us and, and for the people, I suppose. We had a, a committee, as I said, they had an Innes Arden Electrical Power Oversight Committee who we coordinated with quite a bit in the design of the project. Um, now, we reserved the right to have the, the expertise, the engineering expertise to design the system, but we did get useful input from them, and, uh, and they felt like they were involved and that they had some uh, a stake in and were being uh, integrated into the project and uh, I think they felt more comfortable with it because of that. As work was completed in mid-November, all of the 60-plus City Light employees who had a part in the rebuild could take satisfaction in another job well done. And what were the keys in bringing this project in on time and under budget? Uh, have a lot to do with uh, team efforts and management support cooperation between units and good community relations. The Innes Arden rebuild involved many organizations throughout the utility working together with outstanding results. And you might say that energy efficient results are all around us here at the Lighting Design Lab. You know, Henry, I took a walk through the lab when it was under construction a few years ago. And at that time it was planned as just a one-year pilot project. And back then, nobody knew how successful the lab would be at sharing energy-saving ideas. The lab wins many national awards, and funding is now guaranteed through 1997. For lighting designers, seeing is believing, and there's plenty to see here at the lab. The goal of the lab is to help anyone working on commercial lighting projects with the latest information on cost, controls, operation, and maintenance. And it does that all in the most energy-efficient manner. Seattle City Light operates the lab and several of our full-time employees work here. 
It is sponsored by the Bonneville Power Administration, along with other area utilities and energy conservation concerns. It's a great place. It sure is, Henry. It's filled with so many bright ideas. If you'd like to take a tour, you can arrange that by giving them a call at 325-9711. And speaking of bright ideas... One of those submitted to the Bright Ideas Suggestion Program at City Light made it all the way to the big time. City Light's Joe Green thought of a better way to do electrical grounding of City Light poles. His suggestion was implemented and evaluated to save over $100,000 in avoided costs in the first year alone. That netted Joe a tidy check for $10,000 presented by the City Council in November. We asked Joe how he plans to spend the dough. This is the largest Christmas gift I've ever had in my life. And I'm very happy and pleased with it. But I have a wife, you know. And of course, I have two kids in college. This will aid me in sending them to college. And uh, I'm hoping that they'll take this and pass it on to their kids. And when it comes to bright ideas, keep those cards and letters coming in. Send your suggestions to the Bright Ideas Program, room 922, City Light Building. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of NTV. And as always, we welcome your comments and ideas. Reach us at Community Relations 684-3112 or write NTV, room 809, City Light Building. We look forward to bringing you more utility news in the new year. And for NTV, I'm Henry Yates. And I'm Sharon Bennett.